Hey everybody, Brooks from Dragtimes here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm doing basically a garage update on what's gone from the garage, what's coming next, and what the current status is of uh, my upcoming car. So as you can see behind me, what is missing? Yeah, the Ferrari F8 Tributo is gone. I sold that back to the dealer uh, about a month ago when I got news that my Ferrari SF90 was completed. Now, Ferrari has a bunch of status codes ranging from 10 to 95 of what the sequence of the Ferrari is uh, when they build it, secure it, um, test it on the track, put it on the boat to come over here and so forth. And uh, about a month ago, I was updated that my car was done and has been track tested and is complete. And uh, the status really hasn't changed until just now where it went to status 85, which is now storage and waiting to get on the boat. So. I'm thinking the SF90, you can actually track your SF90 progress. They have a Ferrari app, which I'll show you up here on the screen now, which you can track all of your orders. So you can see here I got the Ferrari FA Tributo Spider coming. I got the SF90 coming. And then also what's not shown in the app right here is uh, the SF90 Spider, which yes, I ordered as well. Another core I actually ordered or put on the list for was the 765 Spider. Now I usually keep coupes because they're faster, but this car is so fast. I'm actually thinking about moving to the Spider. More on that later. So as you can see in the app here, there is a picture of mine on the production line showing it just being painted red. It is Rosso Scuderia. And now the next picture when it actually gets on the boat, which should be any day now, will be the completed car. So I think we're looking at about four to six weeks after it gets on the water. You can pay for air shipping on these cars, which, uh, my buddy Ben Baller was instigating me to do. He paid, I think, an extra fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars to have that car come early. It, sh it shaves off about a month of transit time, so it doesn't have to come across on the water on a boat. Nevertheless, that's not my kind of cash, and uh, the SF90. I've already got to experience it uh, four times now, so there's actually not that much of a rush to spend fifteen thousand dollars. Now onto Tesla. Where is the Plaid Model S? I mean. Man, I did a video back in January and they announced the specs of that. And I almost sold my Tesla Model 3 right here uh, because I was getting ready for Plaid. Uh, but I decided to keep it a little longer because I wasn't sure uh, exactly when Plaid would come. And I'm glad I kept it because otherwise I'd be out with the car. Of course, I still have the Model Y performance. Now, Model 3, this will be for sale soon. If someone's interested, give me a buzz. This is uh, lowered on Ibach Springs. We got the T-Sport line super lightweight wheels on this car as well. I think this car also has full self-driving. I think it should sell for about 55,000. I got an offer from Tesla when I did the trade-in uh, estimate on the Plaid S and I think they were offering $47,000. So Tesla Model 3, if anyone's interested, uh, the only issue I'm having is the spoiler back here is peeling a little bit if you could see that. So I got a buzz Tesla, have them come out and replace that. Let's check out the, t the spoiler on the on the Y, that one's actually looking good, although a little loose right here. I gotta get that taken care of as well. Now I did get an update from Tesla because delivery of my Plaid Model S was supposed to be in March. And now we're in April. And then in the beginning of April, I got an update on the website that now says the estimated delivery date for the Tesla Model S Plaid, not the Plaid Plus, because I ordered both, should be in July. So I got two more months till Plaid gets here. Super excited to get that car. Now, talking about numbers, you know, Tesla says that car is going to trap 155 miles an hour. So that is four miles an hour faster than a McLaren 765LT. Those are just insane, insane numbers that a four-door sedan is going to basically beat up on my McLaren 765LT. So much so that I actually compared it. If you look at the 60-foot times, Zero to 60 in the Tesla Model S Plaid is gonna be under two seconds, 1.99. I have an identical run at 155 miles an hour of an actual tuned 765 LT. So a tuned 765 LT ran zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds and went 9.0, 9.04 at 155 miles an hour. So I think Tesla's estimates of 9.2 at 155 with that all wheel drive are a little conservative. I think we could see basement nines out of the Plaid Model S. So of course, as you notice, I still have two McLarens, the 720S and the 765LT. That's because I wanted to get some videos done with the 720S before I sold it. Obviously we raced the two and the 765 beat the 720 handedly. And then I'm trying to decide what's next to replace the 720S. 
So with the lineup being 765LT, Plaid Model S, 4GT, Huracan Evo, we'll talk about that in a minute. The two Teslas, what should replace the 720S? I got a couple of options in mind. I'm thinking about a Porsche 992 Turtle S, I mean, sorry, I mean Turbo S, sorry about that. But when I saw how well the Ferrari runs, that seems a little redundant. You got all-wheel drive supercar with the Ferrari running 9.5. Even the tuned 992 Turbo S's, I think are going 9.5 as well. So it's kind of redundant to have that. So I'm actually thinking about is going back old school to a car that started drag times, and that is a Mazda RX-7. I had a 1993 Mazda RX-7 FD, slightly modified. Back then it was running, it was actually the first car I ever drove down the quarter mile. I think I ran 13.1 at 110 miles an hour with some light mods. After a while, I did some drag racing, drag wars, and all the events back then. I got the car down to low 11s at over 120 miles an hour. So if people know about someone's for sale, I'm not looking for a huge project car. I'm okay with doing a little bit of work, but I don't want to spend a ton of time on it. So a nice FD, red or yellow, R1 package. I like that suede interior that the car has versus the leather and it kind of gets beat up. Uh, let me know, post in the comments or uh, send me a DM on uh, Instagram, dragtimescom. Send me an email, info at dragtimes.com. If you've got a nice specimen RX-7, I would also consider a slightly modified one, maybe a triple rotor 20B, I think that's what they call it, with a single turbo. That could be a really fun car. And yes, I did see the four rotor for sale on eBay that we saw at a TX2K briefly. That car looks phenomenal, but man, the bidding's already up to 175,000. And to be honest, that seems like the never ending project car, something I'm just not interested in right now. I don't have the time for So what do you guys think? Mazda RX-7 to replace the 720S or 992 Turbo S. Let me in the comments what you think about that. Of course, if you're new to the channel and you don't know about all the cars I have, I still have my 2005 Ford GT. This has the Hefner GT700 package making 650 horsepower to the wheels. I haven't done anything with this car in a while. It's kind of my baby. I'm always gonna have it, it is not for sale. I actually get people asking me a lot, hey, when are you selling the Ford GT? And this one's the keeper. I actually sold the new Ford GT and I am keeping this one. But there are some things that I wanna do. I'm thinking about upgrading the suspension. Randy from Savage Garage came out with his Ford GT and had a really nice adjustable coilover suspension system. Dropped it down a little bit because this car kind of looks a little bit jacked up here. When you take a look at the the wheel gap on the front and then on to the back right there. And when you do that system, you can actually lift the car as well. So it'd be awesome to have the Ford GT with a lift system, go over some of those driveways and curbs, but it's expensive. It's about $10,000 to replace the suspension on this. So thinking about doing that. Also thinking about upgrading the blower on this car. So I can put the 3.4 liter blower and get up to about 750 to 800 wheel horsepower. And I think that'd be a pretty sweet spot without getting too crazy in this car. Add 100 horsepower, read the the suspension, and uh, kind of revitalize. Maybe bring up some more videos with the Ford GT because it'll be a little more competitive uh, with uh, the additional horsepower. Now, of course, we also have the Huracan Evo, which actually is sitting right here. Jimmy let me borrow his old Huracan wheel. So I got Toyos on here. I actually brought this car to the track uh, a few weeks ago and raced a yellow Performante. So I got to put that video together. We got Huracan Evo versus Performante down the quarter mile. We did a bunch of races. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm not going to spoil the results, but let's say it is very, very close. You saw at TX2K, I did mention that I saw a lot of twin turbo Huracans and Audi R8s running just fantastic. And I've been thinking about turboing the Evo. So maybe that's the plan. Twin turbo the Evo, get replace the 720S with a Mazda RX-7, then I'll still have the 765LT. We'll replace the Model 3 with the Plaid Model S, keep the Model Y for now, and of course, keep the Ford GT. But to summarize, we got Plaid Model S and Ferrari SF90 probably coming around the same time. So we will have a bunch of really cool races to do there. Upcoming videos I got racing-wise, we have Huracan Evo versus Performante. We also got a Porsche 991 Turbo S modified versus Dodge Demon. And of course, I'm thinking about also doing a comparison video between the two McLarens I still have in the garage here, 
uh, 720S versus 765LT. I also want to do some half mile testing with the 765LT because some people are thinking the shorter gear really hurts the top end. I'm not so sure about that. The numbers that I show up to 150 miles an hour, the 765 is still quite a bit ahead of the 720S, but nevertheless, I'm thinking back to back half mile draggy testing is in order to uh, kind of go over that point. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoy this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, helps the video and the channel. And if you want to see what's com coming with the upcoming videos for the SF90 Plaid Mode and all we got, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.